And Qatar is averaging $5 billion per stadium for what they're building. $220 billion is, is the estimated price from Forbes and from front office sports. I was blown away by this, Paul. I, I don't want to uh, – look, it's, it, it's exorbitant. It's outlandish. It's, it's unbelievable. And as I said earlier, it's uh, in many ways the cost of getting people to overlook your human rights record in order to bring an event to you. And this is three events – in a relatively short span of time that go to questionable countries. You had the, you mentioned the Russian world cup, the Beijing Olympics, and now this, but they are starting from scratch. I mean, those billion dollar stadiums are obviously way more expensive than they need to be. How many billion per stadium did you say? Uh, between six and a half to ten billion, but that still leaves two hundred ten billion unaccounted for, according to this report. Okay, so they're starting from scratch with the stadiums because I don't imagine they had any kind of stadium infrastructure, and if they did, it was probably one stadium, and they're creating eight or ten, um, all I think on some kind of transit loop where you can go. I mean, it's it, it's it, it's lavish, Chad. You can go hop on a, a train, I think and travel from one game at one stadium to another game at another stadium on the same day on this loop. Whereas, you know, here you'd be going from, from Nashville conceivably to, to Chicago or somewhere, uh, a flight at the very least, these are contained in, in such a way. And Hutton, I think they have, um, even with the having been moved to a November, December thing, some kind of cooling mechanism in these, Open air stadiums, which you can imagine the the cost of that. But I'm not saying that it's not incredibly lavish beyond that. It's going to be the most lavish thing ever. And then ridiculously, uh, FIFA will hold other places to standards of lavishness that'll never be met again. The next World Cup is here with some games in Mexico and Canada, and we'll have you know great games at great stadiums. But it's never going to be what these stadiums are. Nothing will live up to that. And that's oil money and, and corruption at its highest. And, you know, and it, migrant workers, in order to uh, keep their livelihood um, or, or just have the, the sign-off to leave and go back where they came from, uh, it's, it, the, the, it's not the government. I, mean, I guess it is the government that signs off on it. But it's the... It's your company, if you're working for a construction company, just to localize it here, the construction company is the one that signs off on it for you to be able to keep either keep your status or leave. Like you're under this contract, and it's up to the, the company to, let you to then home. sign off on it. So you, uh, 1.7 million migrant workers make up 90% of the workforce in Qatar of a population of 2.9 million. So, and how many people have died already? Yeah, I don't know. A lot. But beyond that, I mean, how many people are you know tired of working in these conditions? Um, we're ultimately getting paid based on their status. It would it would imagine uh, status of you know being able to live the life you want to lead, and I I it, it's being overlooked by FIFA because they're going to be able to host in this amazing structure. Uh, the, the other thing that what's in it for Qatar is they're losing all of these top designers that are designing these stadiums normally leave the country and come to the United States or move to London, uh, go to uh, somewhere in Europe and, and work there instead of staying home and working for uh, their home country. So they're trying to keep their top talent, their, their top designers and uh, architects in-house, so to speak. The report that, is 6,500 migrant workers have died in already. Qatar wow. since that's, the World Cup's been awarded. That's in a decade since the World Cup got awarded. That's an average of 12 a week. Uh, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka are where most of the migrant workers are coming from. Average of 12 a week. And these are from different government reports of the other countries. And they even say that's probably a modest number, that it's more than that. Um, is there an international sporting body that's not insanely corrupt? No. IOC, World Cup. I mean, I, the I, the I sport, hate to be this corrupt. way because I love the Olympics, and I, you know, that's if I'm yeah. going to watch soccer, I'm watching the World Cup. 
But whenever you get the whole world together to organize something, is it ever not completely corrupt? Well, think of the size of this. I mean, the World Cup's obviously the biggest sporting event in the world. I mean, uh, but world soccer is monumental, right? English Premier League, Spain, Italy, Germany. These are monstrous powers. They all reconstructed their seasons to pause in November and December, which is prime season for an event that is held traditionally in the summer during off seasons for these leagues. And they said, FIFA basically said, we're just going to, you reconstruct your season. We're going to hold the World Cup in the winter. Because the site that we have chosen is unbearably hot and it cannot be played at the typical time for the World Cup. Start there. We're going to hold the World Cup in a place that it is unbearable to play at the time that we typically play it. Right there, it should be scratched off the board. We can't play in Qatar because we play the World Cup in June and it's unseasonably hot. Yeah, but then Seth Blatter gets his pockets lined right. and you overlook it. But, I mean, it's, before that is unheard of. You just wouldn't I mean, it makes consider me think, a place what, that What do the United play. States do to get it? Well, the United States brings a different thing to it in terms of uh, world popularity and more popularity here. And they growth. clearly don't care about that. What did Qatar bring in that? Well, Qatar's bringing the, the corruption and the money. Well, I don't the think, US I don't think brings, for, for a government a body, for a governing growth. body built around corruption and money. My guess is they don't care about the, pop, the, the popularity of the sport as much as they do no, well, lining you just had, their pockets. You just had Russia and Qatar, the two corrupt. I don't know that you find another hugely corrupt candidate. Oh, prior to, to that, they had Brazil. Brazil. I mean, I think every, everyone that Let's everywhere keep going goes here. is like, paying. Yeah. You think there's someone that's innocent? I think I mean, the to, U.S. is innocent, comparatively speaking, to oh, all these other uh, places. Chad, imagine if a story gets out about what the United States did to host this event. And how it will be treated well, they versus did something. I mean, it did just to lure the the FIFA over. You've done something. I mean, I, I don't know what it is. I'm not saying, you know, we have a migrant worker issue of indentured servitude like they do in over there. Well, but even that, prior to that, by the they, way, HBO Real Sports has a great piece it. on that about the migrant workers and the problems uh, with that. I, I recommend you watch it. Well, but, so so the, on the surface level, that what they tried to do to counteract that was they changed the rules for. Um, getting your the the exit pass or whatever you needed signed off on by your employer. Uh, but what happened was a lot of these companies uh, just refused to abide by the rule, and then there was no one that would step in and call them out for it. I think ESPN had the report that upwards of there there were at least three uh, companies were found non-compliant in, in these areas uh, where. In 2018, Qatar ended the exit permit strategy, which was going back to you needed these these companies to sign off on your exit permit, and those were the ones that were, you know, building these stadiums. Well, let's let's expand this out because we know the corruption with IOC, with FIFA, with what's going on with this World Cup and how expensive it is and everything else. But we just had a Winter Olympics game come and go with a, barely a whisper. Yeah. In this country. I mean, record low ratings. Summer Olympics. In the United States. Winter Olympics. Winter Olympics in Beijing just happened. The, oh, the sorry. Summer was 2008 in Beijing. But we saw an American blowback to that where they didn't care. They stopped watching because they're fed up with what's going on in China. Um, for, in, in large numbers. I don't know what the rest of the world was like when it comes to that. Is there any level of corruption that can get European countries to tune out of the World Cup? Probably is there not. any level of corruption that would get Germany, the UK, Italy, all the countries you just went through, Paul, Spain, to say, you know, I don't care as much. Ratings are going to be about half as much as they always are in November, December in this country because I just can't get behind an organization that allows this to go on. 